Okay. So everything is okay. Go. Uh, so we begin in the name of God, the All Merciful and All Compassionate. So we begin our lecture. This is the third session, and uh, accidentally or coincidentally, this is also the third experiment in self-governance in that uh, territory of the Republic of the Philippines called Southern Philippines. Used to be the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. Now, the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. So, as a background, we proceed, okay? Uh, this is beginning from 2001 to 2018, okay? So, you will notice that the experiment, the uh, first experiment, second experiment, third experiment, and the fourth experiment will always be tied to peace negotiation to peace agreement, to legislation, and to the establishment. So these are the patterns that we need to perhaps always put in the equation. So it follows all the democratic processes. So we begin with peace negotiation. That means the protagonist in the conflict in the Southern Philippines, because the conflict is always the context. So it, it be, always begins with peace negotiation. And then you have the peace settlement and peace agreement. But the peace agreement, as you know very well, the peace agreement needs to be legislated because uh, the peace agreement is not the law of the land and it is not self-implementing. Okay, it's good to know that because many people think that you enter into a peace agreement, then automatically the peace agreement becomes the law of the land. No. The peace agreement is not the law of the land. It is a settlement between the Philippine government as well as the Moro fronts. First with the Moro National Liberation Front that led to the first Moro autonomy experiment. The second is the negotiation again with the MNLF, but this is now the divided front between the MNLF and the MILF. And uh, the final agreement was in 1996. Uh, the first agreement was 1976. And then, of course, Marcos issued different laws, the presidential decree that established the first Moro experiment, and that will be the Autonomous Region 9 and Autonomous Region 12. Now, the second experiment will be the, of course, the, the second experiment will be Corazon Aquino with the 1987 Constitution. That is also preceded by a negotiation, the Jed Accord, and then uh, the new constitution, and then the establishment of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. The third experiment, of course, will be a continuing negotiation with the Moro National Liberation Front that will be concluded in 1996 to be specific. Uh, that will be September 2, 1996. And uh, that agreement needs to be legislated because you need to have either the act of Congress or during the time of Marcos will be a presidential decree. But after the 1987 constitution, Congress has to legislate the agreement in order to make it the law of the land. So the 1996 final peace agreement between the GPH and the Modern National Liberation Front gave three years. Para mga three years, magic, no? magic number. No? So three years of transition in the in the peace agreement with the Moro National Liberation Front, the agreement among with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front also has given us three years of transition. I don't know whether there is magic in the number three, but I just noticed that there is what we call precedent uh, of establishing three years as the period of transition. During that period of transition, because the, uh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so can you unmute? Okay. Okay, so in the peace agreement, there are two phases phase one and phase two. So that will be in Parabang Gendem, Sating Bang Samora Autonomous Region. There's the phase one, the transition under the BPA, and then the phase two when you have the regular. Regular parliament. So, following that pattern, okay? So, phase one will be an executive issuance. Uh, President Ramos, uh, who recently celebrated his birthday, 
issued the executive order 371 and then created uh, a, a territory because Zopa, this is interesting because it's a new concept. We will, in the next slide, we will, we, will, we will explore this new concept, which is Zopa. Uh, this is something new because uh, very often uh, uh, we just think of geography. We are like uh, realtors. We speak of provinces and cities to be included or to be excluded to a referendum or uh, to a plebiscite. This time around, there is a new concept that is, oh, why, why do we discuss uh, coverage in terms of provinces and cities? And very often these uh, divisions of provinces and cities are arbitrary for those territories, boundaries. Uh, if you notice, at least in Cotabato, they seem to be very, very arbitrary. So if you travel from Cotabato City to North Cotabato, you will notice that ah, after Cotabato, of course, you enter Maguindanao. After Maguindanao, a few kilometers, you enter North Cotabato. And after North Cotabato, traveling after several municipalities, you leave North Cotabato, welcome again to Maguindanao. And after two municipalities, you are leaving, it's very funny, you are leaving uh, Maguindanao and welcome again to Cotabato. Then you go around going to South Cotabato, traveling several municipalities of North Cotabato, you exit in Tolunan, welcome again in Maguindanao, you see, and then move again uh, from these two several, several towns in Maguindanao, and then suddenly you are welcome to Sultan Kudarat. So these are the patterns very often in the divisions of our provinces. They are very arbitrary. Sometimes they follow the political interests of families and clans. So, so when you speak of geography, coverage of uh, experiment like surf governance, or when you speak of territory that will be part and parcel of this, this uh, homeland, do you factor in uh, what you call the natural ecosystem that divides, you see, these places? They say that why not follow the, that political because the divisions are political. So Zopad is a very novel, very novel understanding of territory and geography, no longer in terms of politics. Because until now, when we speak of territory, it will be political. Uh, just clearly example of Palawan. Palawan, Palatu, Palatri. No? Palawan, Palawan will be divided into three. Palawan, Palatu, Palatri. But that will be the law and according to the interest of the politicians of Palawan. Buti na lang ho, organize yung mga tao sa Palawan. So they rejected the law in a plebiscite. So we don't have Pala 2 and Pala 3. We have only now one Palawan. And there's a movement, one Palawan. So that's very good. So why divide, you see, the province according to political interest? Now here in, in our place, we will have soon we will be joining the plebiscite also two provinces, Maguindanao, Maguindanao del Norte and Maguindanao del Sur. This is not being criticized. Bakit ba hindi kami naanda sa Kastila ng del Norte, del Sur? Una, Cotabato is already a product of chop, 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 chop policy of the politicians. As you know very well, the entire province of Cotabato, the one province of Cotabato, one Cotabato. Uh, as big as Central Luzon. The first division happened in 1965, you see, between North and South. So uh, South Cotabato is mainly Christian because this will be the settlement during the time of the Commonwealth, you see, until after Second World War II. And uh, the whole South Cotabato are actually the settlement of settlers coming from the Visayas and Luzon. And North Cotabato also, you know, North Cotabato also said that. But anyway, Maguindanao, that will be in the division, it will be the inhabitants, majority will be Muslim. But after the war, even after the division, until 1971, they surprised that, oh, no longer do Muslims enjoy numerical majority, even in that first division of North and South Cotabato. And this happened in the local election of 1971. When uh, the first time, for the first time, they elected a Christian governor, a military, former military, Philippine Constabulary, Carlos Cahelo, 
and this will be the height of the, the war also in Mindanao, the first wave of the war between the MNLF and the Philippine government. Kami mga tiga kotabato, I at least experienced this uh, first war, second war, third war, you know? I don't know if there will be another war. But anyway, to cut the whole story short, uh, geography, boundaries are often done arbitrarily according to the mood, interest, agenda of the ruling powers in that particular province. And the same follows Nanao Nur, Nanao Sur and Nanao Norte, you know very well. And that is the pattern. So comes, this is a new thinking eh. Kasama ko ako dito kaya ako, alam ko to, alam ko because eh, kasama ko sa thinking nito is si General Almonte, no? he's a very good guy. I learned a lot from General Almonte. And he said, Father, but why do we think why do you continue including and excluding provinces? You see, when it comes to autonomous region, why do you act like realtors when we speak of to uh, provinces and towns in a plebiscite that will vote yes and no? This is true in the north and this is true in the south. You see, why don't we come up with a new with a new paradigm? that no longer do we divide people politically or perhaps according to religion or perhaps according to ethnicity. I said, well, that is something very novel. Uh, no longer ideologically, like North, they are Korean here, North and South Korea, that is political subdivision, ideological. Here, according to dynasty, family, you divide the provinces. So we come up with a new paradigm for the peace agreement, that will be no, that will not be political. But this is not understood, not political, but economic. So why don't we just declare a special zone now, yeah, special zone of peace and development, and that will be non-threatening to the politicians because the main purpose of this economic development, economic prosperity of the constituency, and you think also that the future of one province is tied to another province. Say, for example, the future of South Cotabato is tied intimately to the future of North Cotabato. The future of Maguindanao is tied to the future of North Cotabato and Sultan Kudarat. Similarly, also the future of Lanao Sur is tied to the future of Lanao del Norte. And similarly, also the future of the island provinces of Sulu, Tawi Tawi, Basilan. Ah, the future is tied to the future of the Sambuanga Peninsula. So good up, it is very interesting, you know, very interesting because we think geographically, politics, ideology, religions, ethnicity. This time around, you transcend all those natural boundaries that people establish, but come up with a special zone that the primary consideration will be development, economic development, development of the constituents, as well as uh, the fluidity of this uh, arbitrary territory. Actually, this is tied also to thinking of development of Mindanao. And on hope, kaibigan natin si Paul Dominguez, who was the big czar of Mindanao, that the future of Mindanao is not in Cebu or in Manila, that the future of Mindanao is tied to the future of the southern, southern territory of Philippines, Malaysia, as well as Indonesia and Brunei Darussalam. That's why they came up with that East Asian Yaga growth, er, growth, growth area, a, a, new, a new hub. And Zopad will be tied to this Yaga concept. Eh, yung parehong concept na yun, napabayaan na po, kaya hu, wala na nangyari, no? That uh, you don't think of boundaries. You think of peace, development, prosperity, and the development of your constituency. So in sana po ang key sa realization of peace because there will be no peace unless now we come up with awareness of this uh, being intimately tied to one another. Our future is tied to one another. And there are two transitions. Alam niyo itong sobat, hindi political ho yan eh. Tawag yan, coordinative. Coordinating all the economic initiatives coordinating all government agencies and ministries in within the given area and moving to the same direction. Right you know, si President Ramos, kaya ako na po ni President Ramos, in moving towards the ZOPAD. And two transitional bodies were created by EO 371, Executive Order 371, 
and that is the Southern Philippines Council for Peace and Development. Kaya lang ito SPCPD ito, eh, hindi masyado nag-function. Eh, there are only five of them. And that is all inclusive because there is a Christian representative, the Muslim representative, the MNLF representative, you see, the tribe people in the Southern Philippines Council for Peace and Development. Yun talagang dapat mag 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 lead screen ng ng development and chart chart the destiny of Southern Philippines no longer of the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, no longer the Bangsamoro autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao because those will not be viable without the big territory. So hindi pa ho nagdodon yung ganong 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 consciousness that we should be acting as one together and moving forward, you see, not fragmented, ano? Eh, hindi ho nag and then the other one is the Consultative Assembly. And this, parang katulad ho yan ang BTA ngayon, Bangsamura Transitional Authority. So, Consultative Assembly is also composed of 81. And of course, the chair of that is Norm Miswari. Ako ho yung second to Norm Miswari in that Consultative Assembly. I was the floor leader. Kaya inaamin ko rin yung pager ko rin dyan eh, no? But uh, what is important also in that consultative assembly, para makita lang ho natin yung difference, ano? Uh, in the reality that will come in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. In the consultative assembly, it is all inclusive. All inclusive. Ho. Lahat ng local government, na, all provinces, governors, city mayors are included in the consultative assembly. Of course, a majority ho noon eh, MLF, then no, nandong kasi 81 ho yun. And then there are 10 of us who are belonging to the civil society organization and there are also the private sector. Meaning to say the consultative assembly was composed of all sectors, not necessarily with the, with the MNLF, though they enjoy the majority. And the chair of that is Nur Miswari. And by the decision of the group, floor leader. There's no minority or majority of floor leader. So I enjoyed the confidence of the MNLF, the civil society, as well as the local government units in the whole 13 provinces that constitute the SOPAD. Maganda ho, kasi 13 provinces. That is the original Moro province. That is the original Triple Agreement. And of course, uh, in the experiment of Mr. Marcos of LTP-12 and LTP-9, eh, nabawasan ang tatlo. So, but that's the biggest uh, understanding of the territory or geography, but non-threatening because it is not along political lines, but along development, peace, and economic lines. I suppose uh, this will be the key actually in the future in the future resolutions of any conflict and to come up with viable alternative. Because yung ating alternative na binibigay ay hindi magiging viable kasi the poorest pa yun eh, no? Kaya hindi talaga uusad, ano? Kaya nga sinasabi nga ni Governor Sakurtan, eh bakit ba kaming mga island provinces eh isasali dyan sa Bagno, sa Cotabato, and why we are poor, we would like to be included in Sambuanga because Sambuanga is very progressive. Merong reason ho yun eh. Actually, dapat hindi lang sa Sambuanga. All of us in the whole uh, Zopad, eh, magkakadugtong. We are all connected, tied to one another. That is very important. Tama din yung kanyang point na yun eh. Kasi hindi ho, lahat ang mahihirap na provinces, pag samasamain mo, magiging mahirap pa rin. Ano? Kad, eh, eh, para mathematics lang yun eh. Poor plus poor plus poor. Eh, poor din ang equal niya. Kahit buhusan mo yan ng, uh, ng mga ano eh, poor pa rin darating yan. Ano? So, but if you have the whole southern Philippines in that whole Zopad, eh, maganda ho sana ang tatakbuhin. Pero, hindi ho na and the people, even government, eh, hindi ho naintindihan yung Zopad. Eh, si Almonte, hindi man ho believe yung mga tao. After, after Fidel Ramos, eh, hindi na po naturo yun. Kaya nga wala tayong tinatawag na stability of policy. One president established a policy, the subsequent president introduces a new thing. Ano? So wala akong stability. Kaya yung kay Ramos initiatives eh, were marginalized after the election of Joseph Estrada. So similarly also, si Joseph Estrada started naman yung all-out war. Ano? Yung isa naman, all-out peace. So si Mario Josep, ano man itong nangyayari sa Pilipinas? Eh, Fidel Ramos established the policy of all-out peace, peace negotiation and peace settlement. Ano? 
și stradă m-am pus, a abuse new policy, war policy, all out war, you know, and occupy them all, you know, start from scratch and put all the Philippine flag in every camp, you know, and uh, eh, totally, mati displace ko kayo eh, no, kaya na displace na rin yung ZOPAD and yung SPCTD at saka Constitutive Assembly. It was during time of Estrada that I, na nawala ko ito lahat and I resigned also in the Constitutive Assembly. Pero ang Dalaga, if you look at the page on it, non-understanding, non-understanding of the concept of Zopad. And then, hindi uh, na mainstream yung Southern Philippines Council for Peace and Development kasi hindi rin naintindihan ng gobyerno ng mga ministries at hindi rin naintindihan ng mga local government units. Ganon din yung consultative assembly. Pedyo din ho yan. Yung mga governor, except for three, eh, wala nang umaten and there are 13 of them. So, and then the city mayor, there are only three city mayors attending. That is mayor of San Buanga City, mayor of General Santos City, and mayor of Cotabato City. So, because of the friendship I have with Mayor Agan, with Mayor Badoy, and Mayor Nunez of Jensan. So, the rest, eh, wala ho. Eh, talagang very lukewarm and acceptance for consultative assembly to be all together in one basket and move forward. Ayaw nila... So man is a basket kasi waste basket na ko yung kami kaya ako, they like to join us trust na ko yung basket so sus Mario Joseph we are trust kan pala no but anyway the point is that if we put all our resources together and then we can move forward so wala akong nangyari doon then phase 2 yung phase 2 sana yung amendatory law i-amend yeah, yung Republic Act 6734 yung sa second experiment ni Aling Ason uh, Aling Aswan Aquino. So that is the second ex more experiment on autonomy. So the phase two of the peace agreement of Nurmiswari will be amending Republic Act 6734. Following all the legal and constitutional process, and Congress passed Republic Act 9054. So 9054. Uh, they think that that amendatory law strengthened Republic Act 6734. Hindi yung inabolis, ano? Strengthened. Unlike yung sa barn ho ngayon, inabolis to. Lahat abolis, ano? Repealed, ano? The word is repealed. Ito ho, hindi ni repeal yung 6734, but rather strengthening it. So that means there is a continuity. Continuity from the LPP to Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Doon ay wala pala may discontinuity. But arm to the expanded arm resulting from the final peace agreement, merong continuity. Kaya yung mga offices na continue ho, hindi ho na, na alis lahat yung mga employees. Ano? However, eh, alam nyo naman, if there's any law, nag-object na si Norm Miswari doon sa 9054. Sabi niya, it does not contain the spirit and the letter of the peace agreement of the 1996. Sino kanyang main objection? It does not contain both in letter as well as in spirit the final peace agreement. I thought also, ano mo, eh, baka miswari ako, if you look at my back, yung red flag ko doon, that is the uh, miswari flag, you see? Very loyal kayo kay miswari, you see? Sa MNLF. Sabi ka nila, MNLF daw ako eh, no? Okay. So, Eh, we were partners from 19 to 19 until now. Ano? But anyway, the point there is that totally sabi ni Miswari, I thought then that the peace agreement, in a way, will be the framework of the new legislation, Republic Act 9054. And that happens in the Republic Act 11054. So, mm -hmm. tandaan nyo po, no? yung Republic dapat, eh, merong framework, and the framework is the peace agreement. Kaya nga yung sa ating bagong next class pa naman ho yun, ano? Yung Republic Act 11054, inaccept ng Moro Islamic Liberation Front as substantial compliance to the 2014 Comprehensive Agreement on the Bank Samoro. Yun ang pagkakaiba po, no? Doon sa Republic Act 9054, eh, merong rejection ang MNLF because it does not contain both in letter as well as the spirit of the peace agreement 1996. So kaya nga nagkaroon ng continuing negotiation after uh, the plebiscite, after establishing the expanded autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. 
So what is important only to, to note and to emphasize that I believe also, because I've been in many negotiations, not only here in the Philippines, but also abroad, uh, particularly in, I, I've seen the agreement in Northern Ireland, I've seen the comprehensive agreement in Sudan, but of course it led to the partition of Sudan. And I visited also the many history of agreements, including the agreement until now, the agreement in Palestine or Israel, the continuing uh, agreement and disagreement on the issue of Palestine and homeland. So in any, in any of these cases, the agreement becomes always the point of reference of legislation. That means uh, the, that the legislature simply, legis exactly simply legislate the peace agreement because it's not the law of the land. They legislate it, but of course, following the constitutional, constitutional, the constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. Uh, see, uh, as, yeah, last, last class, I said there are, during the time of Marcos, there are three. There are three prominent, uh, prominent uh, uh, characteristics of the uh, of following the constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. The first is the acknowledging the sovereignty uh, that is non-negotiable, the, the sovereignty of the Republic of the Philippines. You know, it's not a separatist movement. It's, they have to acknowledge the sovereignty of the Republic of the Philippines. Second is the territorial integrity of the Republic of the Philippines. You see, you don't lead. Any agreement does not lead to partition, to secession, to division, but you always uh, emphasize and put really emphasis on the integrity, territorial integrity of the Republic of the Philippines. And the three parameter, the number three parameter in all peace settlement is the following of the constitution. It is for this reason that you have to go through all the legal and constitutional processes that after the settlement, it is submitted to Congress for legislation, and after legislation and being signed by the president, it is submitted to the people in a plebiscite. But the government should always support that legislation that contains the agreement because it is the government is the stakeholder. It is the big, you see, the big, the broader view. So, and uh, you never underestimate the power of the national government when it backs the, the peace agreement and the legislation that follows. So there is what you call something that went wrong in the process of amending Republic Act 6734. And until now, Nur Miswari and the MNLF keep on telling the Philippine government and the OIC, that is the Organization of Islamic Conference, because the OIC is the main sponsor of the agreement between the Philippine government and the MNLF, the first agreement, the triple agreement of, of, nine, of, of 1976, and the second agreement of 1996. So 20 years after Pala, no? every 20 years, like Babago, you know? So the OIC continues to prod the Philippine government as well as the MNLF to, to, to come up with the final, or to, so we call uh, a closure in the final peace agreement, whether this is implemented or not. And I suppose baka more than academic with the new law and with the new caretaker in the new law, the more Islamic liberation front. We'll not touch on that because that will be on the next class on the realities, okay? So you have the expanded autonomous region in Muslim up to the plebiscite, five provinces and two cities. But the understanding of powers remain the same. In Article 10 of the Constitution, as you know very well, there are nine enumerated powers of the autonomous region. So very important to your understanding of enumerated powers. Only the enumerated powers are competence of the autonomous region. Kind of very important even in our uh, federal system movement, Sabinala, there should be uh, enumerated powers of the federal state. What is not enumerated shall be continued to be exercised by the national government or by the central government. So uh, the constitution enumerated nine powers. Of course, the 10 one, whatever uh, is provided for by law, no, that is number 10. But anyway, so these are the 10, the nine, nine enumerated powers enjoyed by the, by the autonomous region. But one of the salient points of the final peace agreement is 
when it comes to mines and strategic resources, of course, according to the constitution, the national government operate and own all those um, those uh, mines and natural resources, including the strategic resources. But uh, that has been negotiated by the MILF in the understanding later on on what we call power sharing, the power sharing, you see, between the national government and the the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. So, is ang hinahanap ni, ni Chairman Normiswari when he speaks of uh, when he speaks of uh, resources, particularly strategic resources, minerals within the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. That was not granted in Republic Act 9054, and it was not granted also in Republic Act 6734. 6734. But anyway, in the first uh, the first law and the second law. So that is the main 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 difference. However, uh, as I've said, okay. Itong more important eh, in any settlement. Buti na lang meron akong assistant dito. Okay. Very important ho, very important in any peace settlement or peace agreement or peace uh, resolution of conflict. Ito na tawag na peace dividends. So people should, should experience the difference between during the conflict and post-conflict. If there is no peace dividends, Hey, what for all this negotiation, the whole value of all this legislation and premises, and then our life remains the same. So even how much you change things and all life remains the same, we are we still poor, you know, we're still deprived, you know. You see don't no difference, you know. Uh, I've been telling people, you know, Europe, that is really very difficult, very difficult to convince people to join the peace wagon that their life remains the same, you see. Uh, they've been poor then, they're poor now, and they'll be poor also because future, they will be still be poor tomorrow. So very important is the peace dividends. And could not just say that sa because uh, they're put there by the politicians, you know, as uh, trappings for their political interest. But the peace dividends, the peace dividends, the peace dividends should be should spare the difference between yung before and after. Before, during, and after. So kung mahirap tayo noong before, eh dapat eh, during eh, nagbabago na ho. At immediately after the agreement, our lives should change qualitatively and quantitatively. So without these changes, eh, it's very hard to, to really convince people that the peace agreement, the settlement will be good. So, eh, wala akong difference eh. Kaya nga sinasabi kong ganun eh, no? Eh, in any assessment of peace agreement, any assessment of peace settlements, any assessment of experiment, you know, the people should be the ones to judge that. Kasi ang una mong agreement eh, kaya nga kasama ko sa peace agreement, kasama rin doon sa Republic EO 371, declaration of ZOPAN, yung intense development in ZOPAN. What do you mean by intense? Sus Mario Josep naman eh, kung yung budget ng autonomous region remain the same before, during, and after the peace agreement, where is the development fund? So I've been telling them that, ano? So dapat madobol. And then double, di lang double, four fold or three fold yung budget ng Bangsamoro Autonomous Region uh, compared to the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. If you don't have the development funds for rehabilitation and reconstruction and the life of the people remains the same, eh, ang ganito lang ko sila sa cry, 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 eh, slogan, 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 eh, wala man ho nangyayari. Sabi nga, the real the test in 
kung yung pudding is good or not will be in the tasting. So similarly also sa peace agreement and peace settlement, the real test na whether this agreement is good ay eh yung nakita ho natin sa mga mamamayan nag-improve na. Dati ganoon sila. Ngayon no, naiiba na. No? Dati ho sa barong-baro lang sila nakatira. Ngayon no, meron na konti simento at meron na hong yero. No? Dati ho, eh, ang kanilang, wala silang mga farm equipment. Eh, ang kanilang mga agricultural lines are idle. Now you see the green. Hindi ko man green revolution ni Imelda. No? But eh, green. Ano? Eh, you see the improve. Yung fisher fox natin, eh, walang cut because they have been abandoned. Now you see the fishing ground of Bangsamor Autonomous Region becoming the primary source of livelihood. You see our mountains, kalbo na ho ng mga loggers. Now you have different taste. Makikita mo yung difference. Ang test mo dyan, sabi ko, ang poverty incidence here is 43. Ano? Sus Mariosa, 43%. That means 43% of our constituency are poor below poverty line. So kung meron na tayong yung billion-billion, eh, dapat ma-reduce na yan ang, sa atin sa national average ng 23%. So, 23% na lang po dito sa Baksamor Autonomous Region. Sabi na lang pa dyan, nadagdag ang paho eh, no? So, eh, hindi mo malaman how do you test that, ano? But ang point ko lang is that the development funds, the reconstruction, the rehabilitation, of course, part and parcel of this will be, yun ito natago natin, decommissioning, ako, very, very, very sensitive word, decommissioning of combatants, ano? Eh, yung decommissioning kong batas eh, kasi one way lang eh. Kaya I, I was with the MNLF. Bakit lang i-decommission yung MNLF? Bakit din natin i-commission din yung Armed Forces of the Philippines? Kung wala lang gera, ba't pa natin kailangan yung AFP? Sabi ng father naman, masyado ko man idealistic. You cannot decommission the police and the and the AFP. Eh, mag-decommissioning lang tayo. Decommissioning applies to all. Because part and parcel of this decommissioning is the professionalization of the Armed Forces of the Philippines na no longer you speak of number. You speak of quality. So, yung mobility nila, yung kanilang nila equipment, yung kanilang nila uh, quick response, eh, those are all um, professionalism. Kaya nga, meron tayong um, process transformational uh, tabi natin program professionalization of our military and our police. Pwede naman, sabi nila sa akin, nasa sulat lang yan, nasa letter lang yan. Eh, no? Wala pa yan totoo. Eh, nananaginip ka. No? But anyway, This will be the true test of development funds. And ang tinatawag natin na um, the wherewithal in any peace agreement to make it sustainable. Without the wherewithal, kiss your peace agreement goodbye. Pero kung may wherewithal naman din, hindi mo alam kung saan gagasusin yun. Kiss your peace agreement goodbye also. Tapad ngayon, meron tayong wherewithal. Ano? Pero kung saan gagasusin yung wherewithal, is another thing. Baka ako oh, gasusin na ho yun eh sa mga hong sasakyan. Mga, sabi nila, the biggest, I was talking to the Davao, mga automotive, mga establishment in Davao. Eh, sabi nila, Padet, okay kayo sa Cotabato. Ah. Kayo, the biggest buyers of Raptors in, in, in the whole Mindanao. Ha? Sabi nga, no? Oh, yes, Padet. <coughs> Cotabato City. Sabi ko naman, Cotabato, may yung line mo na hindi nga, eh, no? No, the biggest buyers of Raptors, the biggest buyer ng mga bulletproof, the biggest buyers ng, 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 ng uh, pati yung mga Range Rover will be Cotabato. And when they pay, they pay cash. So, most of them, bundle, bundle pa lang dalang ng cash. Eh, ganun talaga. Sabi ko, they are work with us now. But if the work with us will not go to the development of the constituency, eh, baka ito mag-lead then. Kasi itong third moral autonomy according to Pinoy, will be concluded in a failed experiment. Because yung mabi man ni, ni, Mang, ano, ni Mang Ramos, hindi natuloy yung development funds kasi nagkaroon ng Asian financial crisis. We entered into the financial crisis. So we're not able to, to really allocate the development funds. Yung budget remains the same. But to cut the whole story short, the MNLF rejected 9054. Eh, nagbalik ko si Ms. Wari ho sa rebellion. Nagbilanggo nga ho siya at tapos eh, nag-exile ho doon sa Indanan. 
but until the coming of President Duterte, now he's appointed ambassador or ambassador to the OIC. He, re he lives in Davao anyway. But he says that you need to fully implement the final peace agreement, the 9054 that has been repealed, now meron ang Republic 11054. The 11054 does it contain also the peace agreement between the GPH and the MNRF, and then the comprehensive agreement on the Bangsa of 2014. That is the question that we will discuss for, no? Okay, so we move. Uh, Ito, napaliwana ko ba? Napaliwana ko, no? Na, na advance pala ako, yung parang next slide, eh, no? So, the Zopad, I think, remains a concept that needs to be revisited. Kasi ho, eh, yung five provinces now, saka three cities, in the barn, plus the 62 barangays of North Cotabato, eh, hindi rin ho viable. Sabi nga, kahit ka magtutuwa dyan, eh, ganun pala yung mangyayari ho doon, ano? Hey, I'm just being pragmatic and practical in my analysis. Kahit kung magtutupad do tayo, wala mangyayari do sa five provinces at sa three cities na yun. Mag-una mag na ng konting development here and there, but hindi ko kasali yung malaking teritoryo ng North Cotabato, hindi makasama yung Sultan Kondarat, hindi kasama yung Lanao Norte, hindi kasama yung illegal city, the illegal city will never would like to join the bar. Uh, uh, dito ko, contentious is pa yung Cotabato City, no? Eh hanggang doon pa ho tayo sa hati na ganoon, wala magiging sustainable. The ZOPAD offers us a new concept of understanding geography and territory. Until we really come up with that kind of concept, the way we are doing it now is all political and ideological, and it has no exit. It will necessarily mag-fail yan, ano? Kat anong katotuhan mo dyan, mag-fail ho yan. Look at all these provinces and these cities. Then not even sabihin natin na contiguous, ano? Eh, and sometimes we, we, what we call, we entertain all these delusions for our own benefit, ano? But, eh, parang mo nakikita na ang future, kahit ka mag-extension, no? kahit ang extension mo hanggang the next century, ho, eh, hindi mag-improve unless we come up with a new concept in terms of territory and geography. So, sabi niya, five provinces, eh, sulu, tawi-tawi. Maginda na, eh, Nano del Sur. Hindi naman ako nag-iisip ng mga kababayan ko kayo lahat. Ano? Eh, ikot-ikot lang po tayo. At ang po tayo magkakaroon ng development, it will be in, in, in inches o in feet. Ano? There will be no leapfrog. Eh, si Ramos nagkaroon ng leapfrogging. Ano? Leapfrog of development. Kasi in ating territory geography, are uh, arbitrarily done. Eh ngayon, mag-chap-chap pa ho sa Mindanao. Baka mag-chap-chap din yung Sultan Kudarat. Mag-chap-chap. Ang, ang autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, chinap-chap na yung mga munisipyo. Ngayon, chap-chap-chap na rin yung provinsya. So, we become the land of the chap-chap. Ano? So, eh, in a comprehensive holistic development, eh, I don't know. Baka inispaw sa lang small is beautiful. Eh, usually, yung small na napupunta sa mga Kapamilya lang. But anyway, so the Zopad is a new concept that needs to be revisited because it constitutes the southern Philippines na na merong history and then these are the 13 provinces and all cities therein. It will be actually a natural ecosystem. Eh, no? Why? Because it includes the peninsula of Zamboanga. O, oh, chinap-chap daw sa tatlo yun eh. Plus, ang Buwaga City, tsaka Pagadian. O, oh, I don't know kung city na rin ba yung sa, sa Ipira, no? But, eh, chinap-chap. So, it will include the whole big peninsula of, of Zamboanga. It will include the whole Empire Province of Cotabato. Wow! As big as Central Luzon, ano? It will include the whole the whole Empire Province of Lanao. Lanao Sur and Lanao Norte. And it will include also all cities therein. Wow, napakaganda ho sana. And that will be the Zopad. Eh, we need to, to revisit that. Actually, it will, it will actually tailor-made sana do sa understanding ng MNF, original ng territory ng 13 provinces because it's the southern Philippines, the Moro province. Eh, until you go back there, there will be no satisfaction. Kaya itong call for Zopad is a eh, 
is actually what you call a redrawing again that Moro province, but no longer in terms of politics and ideology and ethnicity or religion, but rather in terms of economic development, peace, no? and, uh, and emphasizing the interconnectedness of these provinces in the southern Philippines. But definitely, ito nangyayari na ngayon with the BAM, no? the intense focus of peace and development because without that uh, reconstruction and without that uh, uh, talagang reconstruction of the place that was ravaged by war, ravaged by poverty, you need to rehabilitate, to reconstruct the whole area para maging at par yan with other regions in the Philippines. And now it's a bigger region, it becomes an autonomous region, it can be an experiment also, a transitional experiment towards federalism. It can be a federal state, you see. The South, the Zopa can be a federal state, you see. You know, gusto ng ating chairman eh, he will be appointed as chief minister of the whole Zopa in a federal state. But anyway, that will be besides the point. I think there is still, you know, no? it's a whole new concept, you know. New concept, mainly parang parliamentary, di ba? In the bar, it is parliamentary. The whole governance belongs to the parliament. But there is already, at the early year, the president is the consultative assembly and then the SPCPD. Na collegial, oh, collegial. Ang, sa BAM ngayon, collegial. Pero sabi ko pa, hindi ba talaga collegial dyan? Kasi very far, para din silang regional uh, autonomous region director, mayor, uh, regional, I'll call that governor. Eh, ang new concept is collegial. We're in the parliament, you see, or now the BTA. So because powers are temporarily exercised by the BTA, so in the parliamentary, the seat of government with the parliament, the future of the executive and the legislature. And then to your consultative book, kasi si Jenna Gagali yung mga policy, you know. I remember, ako po, eh, yung sa consultative assembly, we were able to pass ho, eh, about 200 resolutions. All of them are enacted eh, by the national government. Sino hindi madi-discourage, you know? Eh, talagang seryoso kami sa pagkakawa ng policy to improve the southern Philippines eh, wala naman ang nangyari because of the failure to understand the whole concept of the SOPAN. At eh, you have to, siguro, the other one is eh, okay. yung SPDA. Okay. Si Marcos lang ako nakaintindi ng SPDA okay. tsaka si Almonte. Eh. So the southern Philippines Development Authority so authority, no authority. It will be part of BTA authority also. Alam mo, they can transact internationally, you know. They can ask the Philippine government also to give a sovereign guarantee when they incur loan for the development of then uh, LTP nine and LTP twelve because SPDA covered southern Philippines. You see, so maganda ho yun eh. That thing needs to be revisited. Uh, very important the revisiting of the law. Revisiting of the mechanism that is the SOPAD and the territory and then the SPCPD and the SPDA. Now, uh, of course, uh, in the parliament uh, with the 58 powers, enumerated powers, hopefully uh, it will work. But anyway, we will see. That will be our next class. Okay. So basically, this will be the, the yung, yung Kemiswari, uh, the peace agreement. Uh, so this is a concept not understood. No funds for intense focus development. Look for acceptance of SOPAT, SPCP, and CA. Ang, ang result niyan is failure, of course. Ano? If you have this three analysis and uh, three, you know, sus Mario said, wala, the failure who yan. Concept not understood. Funds uh, are not available, no budget. And then uh, look for acceptance of SOPAT, both by government and by the people constituency because of the failure. So, ang conclusion niya will be failure. Sabi nga ni Pinoy, at the end ng prior to the negotiation with the more Islamic Liberation Fund, the signing of the peace agreement, in present reality, so natin, na this is a failed experiment. Eh, tandaan nyo, the first experiment was considered failed experiment. The third experiment is called failed experiment. The third experiment is a failed experiment, and now this opens up to the fourth experiment. 
Pero pag patuloy-tuloy yung ating understanding, parang ano lang eh, parang contiguous lang eh, no? parang chronological lang eh. Alam mo na mangyaya at the end, even after the end of 10 years or 20 years, it will be a failed experiment. Kasi yung defective yung understanding ng territory, defective the understanding ng mechanism, defective the understanding or yun ng no, no law. So anyway, eh, that remains to be seen. You know? But anyway, they're only one year and a half. Now they're asking for, for extension nung ating transition. But to conclude, this particular portion of our lecture uh, with all these three part and parcel of the analysis, uh, failure. Then yung analysis din naman ho, yung, ano, yung UNDP. Nakasama ko doon sa mga pag-analyze ng UNDP. No? Ang kandala naman hong analysis at bakit naging failure yun? Uh, number one, uh, sabi na doon, uh, no funds. That is a formula for failure. No funds. Ngayon, no, kaya ang government natin ang provide ng funds po, di bang Samoro at ano mo si Jermo si Mindanao. Napakalaki, 70 billion of 5% of all tax collection and custom collection. Malaki ho yun, ano? So, the verbatim is there. Second of failure ho ng assessment ng, uh, ng UNDP is that uh, yun, during the time of transition, eh, sabi niya yung transition is very short. Totoo, 3 years lang yung transition. Eh bakit inulit ito? 3 years din yung transition. Ano? So, short. Ang transition will be longer. So, kaya nga siguro this is the basis of the movement for extension. Kasi any kind of transition eh, from one form of government to another form of government, you need a longer transition. So, so, yun ang importante po, no? Tama pa rin yung next slide. Okay. Oh, yung figure. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, very important na longer yung transition. I think this is the very basis of the analysis why there is a clamor for extension. You need longer transition. Pero kung longer transition mo, kung ganun pa rin, no? eh ganun pa rin din ho yun. Pwede lang yung longer transition kung ang yung itatransit ay naiba. Eh kung gagawin nung no, pareho din, eh sabi ko that's too long, ano? Kaya even three years is too long. Kaya, <laughs> what kind of transition are you doing, ano? You're just doing the same thing, ano? So, if you have something different in terms of, sabi ko nga, yung territory, geography, powers, mechanism, eh, eh itong maliit yung three years. But if you are doing the same thing, that is too long. So, kaya nga, depende nung what kind of transition. And number three naman sinabi ho ng, ng UNDP in the analysis of the failure of the third experiment is that eh kasi yung ginagawang development eh, yung ginagawang changes, eh changes piecemeal, piecemeal. <laughs> Parang mong sari-sari store. Eh, tingi, no? Eh, Bigyan ko nyo ng uh, 5 pesos na mantika, 5 pesos na suka, 5 pesos na toyo. Eh that is piecemeal. Eh, any kind of development, eh, kailangan ho, wholesale. And eh, hindi pwede yung i-develop itong barangay na ito, i-develop yung munisipyo ngayon, i-develop itong isang sitio, i-consult itong isang kalsada na, 10, na 5 kilometers, 1 kilometer there. And that is called development by peace bill. Kaya ako, tawa ko ng tawa. Talaga Pilipino, may lig sa sari-sari store that even in resolving conflict, and coming up with a peace settlement and coming up with reconstruction and rehabilitation, we do it by piecemeal. Ako ho eh, bold na ako magsalita ngayon kasi nasabi ko na ho sa lahat na yan. Ha? No, it cannot be done by piecemeal. It should be wholesale. No? The whole... Katulad eh, ho natin ang COVID. Natatawa lang ako yung COVID-19 assistance ho dito. Magbigay ka ng 5 kilo sa price. Kung bigyan ka ng limang latang sardinas at dalawang noodles, noodles ang tawag na noodles, ano? Uh, how well can you go? That's good for one to few days and that is your cover line assistance. But eh, nakakatawa lang po eh, your millions eh. Sabi ko kung ginawa na lang sa bigas, yun pwede na lumubog ang buong maging danaw, pati lanaw sun, lumubog na sa bigas, ano? Ang pag-order mo, pagbibigay mo sa tao, hindi 5 kilos, kundi 1 sack of rice, ano? One carton of sardines, one carton of noodles for one month. Eh, well, can, eh mga token ho yan eh, token. Eh, ganoon din sa development ng peace agreement. You're gonna do it by token. 
Mr. Ramos, I wrote that in uh, Inquirer. I used to be a columnist in the Inquirer, you know? and Ramos read my column there, uh, tokenism, you know? tokenism in terms of implementing the peace agreement. So, ang, ganun din no, ang atin, pag meron tayong tokenism in our approach to the development, and tokenism in our reconstruction, and tokenism also in our rehabilitation, eh, this will be another another candidate for a failed experiment. Sabi ko, okay lang yung extension kung meron may iba. Pero kung yung, exper yung extension mo, ganun pa rin. Sus Mario said, would you mean we will have another three years of this? That will be too long. Ano? However, if this is something different ano? in terms of concept, idea, and, uh, and sabi natin ng holistic understanding ng ating geography, eh, meron pang future. Ako, I'll go for extension. Kundi ho, eh, baka yung susunod na presidente eh, that we will elect in 2022 will come up with this conclusion. Hopefully not that the bomb has become a failed experiment. So I will conclude there. We will have a break. Do you have any questions before I put itong, end itong sharing? Ito, stop sharing. Okay. Okay. That is the first lecture. Okay. Any, any question? Okay, na nakarinig ako eh, no? Hirap pag ako nagsalita dito, nakakarinig ako eh. Okay. Yes, Father. Uh, Attorney Barundi po. Attorney, okay. Uh, Attorney uh, Barundi, go ahead. I have a question regarding the, uh, ano, per pertaining to the participation of uh, uh, MNLF Chairman Normi Suarino as uh, Regional Governor of then uh, ARM. Uh, my, my first question is, was that a uh, policy on the part of N MNLF to uh, participate in uh, the regional government, considering that, at, as you have said, uh, MNLF rejected uh, RA9054, and yet uh, Chairman Noor no, uh, uh, accepted to be uh, elected as the regional uh, governor. Would that not be considered the uh, father as, uh, uh, as somehow a sort of inconsistency on the part of the policy of the MNLF vis-a-vis -vis regional autonomy. Okay, okay. Good question. By the way, Atone Badruddin, ano, the Republic Act 1954 is 2001. That is the beginning of rebellion of Nur Miswari. He became governor of autonomous region from 1996 to 2000. 2000. Kasi magkakaroon ng election ng 2001 na new law na atas election. So, this is So, Doon ho siya sa transition, yung transitional period from 1997 to 2001. That is the period of SPCPD, Consultative Assembly. But no Miswari submitted himself to election. Can you just imagine, no, few months after November ata yung election ng, 7, ng, ng 1996. Eh. Of course, pangandaman din not to run. Siya lang sole candidate eh, by the dictate of Mr. Ramos siguro, no? So he was the sole candidate, but at least he submitted himself to election if he was elected regional governor. Kasi ho, dalawa ho yun eh. Yung SPCPD and Consultative Assembly, they are consultative coordinative body. Kasi EO yun eh, no? So honey during the time of transition is the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. Ano pa ho yun? Under 6734, Republic Act 6734. Kasi yung amendatory law, wala pa ho. Ginagawa pa, which is in phase two. So actually, your amendatory law will happen only during the time of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. I don't know, nagkaroon ng conflict between Arroyo and no Miswari. Hence, the return of Miswari to rebellion. Okay ba yun, ano? So walang contradiction yung kanyang pag ng governorship elected there kasi ho kapartner yun ng SPCPD, SOPAD, at Consultative Assembly. Yun ang pagpresente ng no, Ms. Wild because I was there and when during the final moments of the peace agreement of 96 in Jakarta na in sa kanya ni Ambassador Yan na, na during the transition chairman, eh, you will be the chairman of the Zobad, eh, you will be the chairman of the Consultative Assembly and you will be the regional governor of the autonomous region. Parang kapiro, three in one. Ano? So naging eh, three in one yun. That means yung autonomous region, eh, governance structure, political structure that the Zopad is much bigger, and that is a bigger territory of 13 provinces that is coordinated peace and development. And then you have two 
yung tinatawag natin transitional mechanism and chairman normisar will still be the chair. Kaya tatlong position niya rin eh. Chairman ng SPCPD, chairman ng consultative assembly, and regional governor na autonomous region and multi Mindanao. Nung hindi na po sa region, nag-rebel na uli siya. Tama ba yun, uh, attorney? Bagro din. Will that answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, Wolf Father. Thank you. Okay. Who else? Who else? Father, malamig ba dyan? Naka-scalp ka? Malamig ba dyan sa office mo? Dito sana, mainit eh. Aircon. Ah. Parang air-condition ka. Father Naval, do you follow this uh, development in the autonomous region, Bangsamoa autonomous region? Do you have anything to contribute? Your microphone is off. Okay. Father, do you follow the development in the Bangsamoa autonomous region at autonomous region of Muslim Mindanao? You were in South Cotabato before. Yes. Yes. Wala. No sound. Ayan, meron ng sound. Father, unmute yourself. Okay. Now, okay. Do you have anything, Father, to say? Wala pa rin. Wala, okay. Then, uh, you have been with peace. You have been with the peace. Do you want to add something? Do you want to say something in your peace work or peace uh, involvement in the peace? Would you like to say something? Okay. I'm yes, Father. Society has really been, oh, the society that I know of, it's really divided over the, you know, the, the, extension or the non-extension of the barm and uh, well that's the that's the ngo world and um as much as possible we do try to have to facilitate dialogue between these conflicting ideas because it really con also causes confusion in the communities where they are and um well, that's the NGO world for us. You know, it's it's divided, and there are pros and cons. We try as much as possible as we can to really be more on the facilitate facilitating role. Salamat okay. sa lecture, Father. Ha. By the way, the extension will be covered in the next lecture, pa. May panaman natin pa tayo sa transition. Okay. Na pa tayo sa present. The present reality. Meron, yung present reality yung yung extension and election. Doon tayo magdagaro ng Papa, Papa. Okay, yes. Uh, Attorney City Aisa, do you have anything on this? Attorney City. Uh, and who would like to say something? Huh? Who would like to say something? Oh, yung ating judge dito, mga judges natin. Judge Akobe, do, do you have anything to say? Hello, Father. Yes. Go. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, Father. Personally, I'm for the holding of the regional elections this coming May 2022. Okay, that because is the law. It is, it is through election that the, the barn people will have it's the the political legit legitimacy show, should should be had through elections only so okay. the election shall proceed in my opinion but uh, it depends right, right, on the, right. really on the privacy yeah outcomes. that is the law also okay oh yeah, that's that is in the law so talagang judge who kayo you have to follow the law observe the law okay that's good you know and that is the what we call the legitimation of rule also that's good okay who else would like to say Uh, Judge Joanna, uh, Attorney Joanna, do you have anything? Would you like to contribute uh, in the discussion? Oh, see, Attorney Zeng. Attorney Zeng, Gisamburon, can you unmute yourself? 
yes, mother. Yes, you would like to contribute in the discussion? Oh, wala naman po, father. No. Yes, go ahead. Wala, wala po so far, father. Oh, wala so far. But we can I ask everybody to put yourself in so that we can have a picture taking eh, mag, para sa attendance. Be present nga lahat kayo para paano pag-picture nga nito? Uh, kasi nire-require ho eh, mag-picture daw tayo. Uh, okay. Okay, picture tayo lahat to. Okay. Okay. Para ma-include tayo sa picture. Okay. Okay, now. Okay now, and yeah, okay. Picture nga. Okay, smile. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Huh? Okay, you can take your copy anytime. Attorney, habito, ano, tiga rito ka You would like to say something? Uh, wala pa sa akin, brother. <laughs> Thank okay. you, brother. Eh, Atoni Bantuas, you want to say something? Nakaismal ho kayo, baka nagtatawa lang kayo sa ating lecture. Eh. Uh, Atoni Bantuas. Sir, uh, for me, sir, uh, uh, sometimes the perspective of uh, lawyers is that uh, law is a barrier to social development approach. However, our perspective should be a change that law should not be a barrier, but uh, to be seen as a as a mechanism to foster change. Okay. It, it should not be considered as uh, to restrain uh, development, but to but to foster change. Okay. Okay. Ah, sige, ito. Paayong doon na punta sa doon ni Tinket. Sino ang sasabot ako? Mm -hmm. Okay, si... Okay, at Judge Martin, would you like to say something coming from Central Luzon? Judge Martin. Number two pa naman kayo. Okay, Judge Martin, would you like to say something? None, Father. Uh, oh. Ang, ang makinig lang sa lecture nyo. Father, okay. I'm just curious. You mentioned a while ago the name Pangandaman. Yes. Are you referring to Nasir Pangandaman? Yo, no. Niya, si Saidamen, ambassador oh. Saidamen. The father. Yes, because, oh, because Nasir Pangandaman was our DAR secretary before. Yes, yes, yes I know. I can't remember if that was during the uh, Ramos regime. Makapagal Arroyo ho. Ah, okay. But Kayun po yung binigay uh, na po doon para hindi labanan si Nor. Ganun oh. ba? Si Said Damien po yun, si Ambassador Said Damien, who was the, he was actually the incumbent governor of the autonomous region. Oh. Then, you know, siya nag-re-elect siya at uh, gave way to Nubis Wari. Oh, okay. Thank you, Father. Thank okay. you. Now I know. At sa mga MILF, eh, no? Actually, pwede man pag-usapan yung hinihingi na lang extension, saka pa rin ang in-charge. But you can have elections sa regular parliament. All the governors are willing to extend naman yung kanila. Pero may election. Kaya pa mananalo din kayo, sabi niya ang mga gobernador. Dadali namin kayo, no? Huwag kayong matakot. And then the national government also will support. It kung mag-support sa MILF. Kaya kung meron ang kaso tayo, President, eh, during the time of the MNLF, eh, supported by the national government and then supported by the governor. Eh, nanalo din yung kanila mga delegates sa eleksyon. Sabi ko, you can never underestimate the power of the presidency or the national government. And you cannot also underestimate yung consent ng mga LGUs, particularly the governors. Sabi ng mga governors, pwede man natin upuan at pag-usapan. Ang ayaw lang namin yung, it will be more of the same, kayo kayo lang dyan. Pag tayo nagkaroon ng extension, eh, isalin nyo naman kami sa mga ministry, sa mga BTA, eh di kayo kayo lang, ano? Eh, reasonable naman yung kanilang hinihingi, no? Like example, as para sa inyo, eh, sa ministry nyo, eh, bakit naman dalawa sa Tawi-Tawi, dalawa sa Sulu, dalawa sa Lanong Sur, dalawa sa Basilan, dalawa sa Maguindanao? Hindi lahat puro MIL with two, with two exceptions, ano? So, ganoon din sa BTA. Pag hindi natin na, yung, pag tayong lahat maging all-inclusive, then mananalo kayo. We can work it out. 
the interest of the governors and the city mayors will be the local government. Wala mas sila masyadong interest doon sa taas, sa region. Pero kung sa kanyo lang, nakaka-interest kami kasi it means employment of our people, ano? na-excluded sila. Pero kung sasali nyo sila, sabi ng mga gobernador, eh, we will vote for you, no problem with that. But upuan natin and we come up with a settlement. Di ba very reasonable naman po yun, ano? Anyway, na, nakasali po ako dito sa mga ganito, kala po yung mga ganyan, eh, no? Eh, yung mga sabi nyo, di ba si Pancho Lara ho, eh, nagkaroon ng malaking question dyan, eh, no? Yung annual sa international debt. Sabi nyo, the people support your uh, your extension, ano? Nagkaroon ka ng 1 million signature. Eh, wala kayo dapat siya katakot sa election. Kung yung 1 million nyo, boboto sa inyo, hindi yung majority in the parliament. The regular parliament is more powerful than the BPA. So if you claim that uh, the people support you, if you claim that there will be 100 million signatures for the extension, eh, ba't pa sila mag-extension? Ba't din lang sila bumoto sa inyo and it will be a regular parliament and that will be more powerful than the BPA. So, so yun yung, yung mga argument nun sa kabila. No? Totoo din naman, ano? You have nothing to fear. Either supportado kayo ng national government, supportado kayo ng LGU, and supportado kayo ng mga people if they truly, yung mga nagsasabi, Extension, extension, one million na raw eh, no? Eh, boboto ba sa inyo yun? Baka mamaya, salita lang yun, extension, extension. Pag actual election, they will not vote for you. They will vote for their own. So, yun ang malaking question ngayon. If there is a popular support, wide support, eh, you have nothing to fear. But above all, if the national government supports you, as well as uh, the LG, kasi mayroon yung extension, alam nyo, bago tayong presidente sa 2022, eh, kung appointed kayo, very, pwede kayong palitan ng new president. Ano? So, your, your, your stability is in question. Eh, mag election tayo sa 2020. Well, if you are elected, you will have a mandate, a tenure, na kahit sinong presidente, unless of course, impeach kayo o kulong kayo, eh, stable yung position. Hindi ho unstable. Yun ang isang mga argument doon. If you believe the people are for you, you are supported by the LGU, you are supported by the national government, much better to have an election because your mandate is coming from the constituents of the Bangsa Autonomous Region and Muslim Mindanao. Your mandate is not coming from the big datu in the Pasig River. You know? na mapapalitan na rin. So, baka mamaya, pumalit doon eh, hindi kayong gusto, hindi kayo natipuhan at palitan kayo. So, unstable yun. While the other one is more stability because you have a tenure of, in, your, in your service, in the membership, in the Bank Tamoro Parliament. Anyway, sino pa ang gusto magsalita? Break na mo kayo. Well, well, ano, break na ho yan. Sige. Bago tayo magsimula. Kasi, Ang susunod natin na yung Republic Act 11054. Okay, wala na ho doon. So, magbibreak muna ho tayo. I will have a break ng 15 minutes, okay? So, for your coffee, ako lang yung magkakapili, no? Oo. Oh, sa panerito. Oh, sa dito? Sa sugar. La Pasalena. Father, may clarification lang tungkol dun sa ano, sa, oh. sa reaction paper. Tatlong reading assignments. So, tatlong reaction papers din na isasubmit. Hindi ho. Nakalagay dun. Optional reading yung dalawa. No? Optional. Ay, yung... Oh, um, oh. So far, you have only your first lecture, your first reading material na reflection paper, tsaka yung second session. And the lang binigay ko sa inyong optional reading, that's optional reading for your development. However, kung kayo na-absent, pwede kayong gumawa ng paper based on the optional reading. Okay, no? Okay. So, ang isasabit namin, Father, is uh, uh, yung reading assignment, may reaction paper na two pages. Hmm. So, Bali, dalawang reaction papers, Father. Oh, ito pangatlo. Gagawin mo assignment ngayon. Okay. 
Nakita. Thank you, Pero Adel, kung meron kayo, yung reading ko, ang optional eh, basahin din ho natin, ha? Okay? Maganda yun eh, mga optional reading. Okay, tapos okay. eh, kung meron ng absent, gawa na lang isang paper based on the optional reading. Okay, ho yan. Okay, thank you, Father. Hmm. I think we will begin. Okay na ho ba magbegin? We begin the second part of our lecture. Okay. Eh, nasa yung aking assistant dito? Para dito. Ah, doon. Okay. Okay na. Okay. Ito na. <clears throat> ito ho yung... Ito, this is actually... <clears throat> you will write a paper on this. So I'll just go through it because you will read it. Ang assignment nyo po is it just to compare. Hindi ko magkukumpare rather. Read Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. And read also Republic Act 9054. Read these are the two readings. And then uh, just uh, come up with two-page paper. Ano yung inyong... Na, na, to you, is a difference. Yung, even you don't have to write a paper. You can't... Kahit pa, bullet, bullet presentation lang. What you perceive as the improvement or lack of improvement from 9054 to Republic Act 11054. Para mag-comparison lang kayo but come up with a bullet presentation lang, not necessarily a paper, of the difference between these two laws. And what is important, hindi ulat ng difference, what you believe to be very crucial in the passage from Republic Act 9054 to Republic Act 11054. Okay, how about Tama po yung aking assignment? Did you get it? Hello? Uh, yes, Father. So, you, Father. Yes, yes, Father. Okay. So you don't have to write a paper, even a bullet lang, ha? bullet presentation. What you believe is the basic you know, difference, na, very important difference between Republic Act 9054 and Republic Act 11054. Okay? So, well, I'm I'll go, through, I'll go through this uh, very fast because this will be your assignment. Okay. I will go now. Okay. So the new one is called, this is the fourth experiment, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Okay. So uh, the actual, the realities will be in the next lecture, but now it's the law only. Okay. But where do we begin in our, as in, in appreciating the new law? Where do we begin? That's very important, you know? So, the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, kaya nga na, that is the third experiment, not, one, not with studying billions poured through the years, remain the poorest in the country. So, poverty incident is highest, 42 to 47%. Lowest literacy rate, 65 to 70 percent. Kaya ako mag-extension tayo, ito dapat nilang tingnan eh, no? So merong improvement dyan. If they started doing something here, okay lang siguro extension, no? Lowest survival cohorts in basic education, that means from grade 1 to grade 12, 45 to 50 percent ang kanyang survival cohort in basic education. If you have only 45 to 50 percent, eh, talaga ang development mo is in jeopardy for the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. That means kung talagang gusto nilang ano, subaybayan po itong basic education, at least kung ang survival cohort in the basic education reach at least 70 percent, ang ating pong national average is over 80. So 60 to 70, dapat lower yung survival cohort so now will be 30 or 20, you know? Ang survival cohort, ang, ang, ang casualty. Kung 50%, just ko ka, that means eh, sa 100 na 50, na 100 na grade 1, 50 lang ho ang makakapasa sa high sa grade 12, o minsan 45 lang out of 100. So habang ganun, no, eh, there will be no change. The minimum of basic services, particular health and education, is still considered poor. Kasi dapat yung with our verbal now, ang access to quality education and quality health services will be at the optimum. Eh, sabi nila, a cycle of war, peace, war, peace, three peace, three agreement, ano? Pero meron pa rin, ngayon, 
the other day may yung foot laban namin yung BIFF MIL sa against combined forces of the MILF AFP magkasama na ho yung MI at AFP laban sa BIFF so i don't know if that will be true also sa ASG no against sa Sulu and Basilan so yung promise na talagang wala nang war eh wala pa rin no kasi merong BIFF merong Abu Sayyaf group So we simply call them terrorists. It's another thing also. But these are the realities. Do we begin from these statistics so that when we consider of extension or election, we look at this. So these are the realities. Hindi lang yung ating interest to be there. So as I've said, this is the fourth moral autonomy or fourth experiment on moral autonomy under the organic law for the Bangsa Moro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. This follows the peace agreement between the Philippine government and the MILF in the year 2015. So it took signed by the president into law July 28, 2014. The basic difference is that, as I've said, the MILF accept the new law as compliant ano maganda yung word eh, compliant or substantially sabi natin substantially contain the 2014 comprehensive agreement in the Bangsamoro the basic difference between this law and 9054 rejected by Ms. Wari is that the new law does not contain the spirit as well as the letter of the peace agreement so this time around eh, sabi nga eh, hindi na dapat magpayo kasi substance, substantially compliant to the 2014 CAB. At nagkaroon ng plebiscite po eh, in January 2018, February, January, February, and approved, approved in five provinces, in cities of Cotabato, cities of Marawi, cities, cities of of Lamitan. Basilan po, eh, sa Basilan, yung city of Isabela did not join. Voted no. So that means, eh, ang ter at saka 60, in the 62 barangays in North Cotabato. So limited yung kanyang territory, no? Remaining the five provinces. The five provinces will be the province of Maguindanao, the province of Lanao Sur, the province of Basilan, the province of Sulu, province of Tawi-Tawi and the cities of Cotabato, Marawi and Lamitan. Pero Lamitan is a component province of hindi o chartered city, a component province of of Basilan. So three cities, five provinces and 62 barangays of North Cotabato, the new area coverage of of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. So, ito, basahin nyo na yung, babasahin nyo yung loka, hindi ko na ako magpapa, mag, ano ha. Pati ito, babasahin nyo na ho rin yan eh. So, alam nyo na ho lang yan. Hindi ko na ho yung ikakari. Parang Article 1, eh, ito lang yung mga important ng uh, well, the Bangsamoro people. This law is uh, something new because uh, sabi nga, the law specifies the Bangsamoro identity. Ito important lang, Bangsamoro identity. So you have the Bangsamoro region, that is territory. You have the Bangsamoro people, and you have the Bangsamoro identity. You have the Bangsamoro government. So when you speak of Bangsamoro, you cover yung pong apat na yun. Ano, ano ba? You're referring to what? So you're referring to Bangsamoro territory, Five provinces, three cities, and 62 barangays. Are you referring to the Bangsamoro identity? That is the people identity. Uh, you are referring to Bangsamoro government, which is parliamentary now during the transition, uh, Bangsamoro transition authority. Yung identity po, eh, addressing, kaya dito, naging, nagkaroon ng division, eh, who constitutes the Bangsamoro people? So this is very important. So the law states that those who at the advent of the Spanish colonization were considered natives or regional inhabitants 
of Mindanao and Sulu Archipelago and its adjacent islands. But your adjacent islands, ano? Hindi din pa yung adjacent. Whether of mixed or of full blood shall have the right to identify themselves. Similarly, also, their spouses and descendants are bang sa moro. So, tandaan niyo yun, ha? Kaya, nag, ang basic question mo dyan, eh. eh. Basic question, number one, eh, yung mga Christian settlers are not included in the identity of Bangsamoro people. That is the first question asked. Uh, the settlers have come to the southern Philippines beginning 20, uh, 1910. 1910, then 1916, and then 1920s, and then in 1930s, and then after the war. So, ang question eh, how long do you need to settle in the territory called Bangsamoro in order to qualify for the Bangsamoro identity? That's the first question. The second question, that's why I just put in yung mga controversial thing. The second question is that, uh, what do you mean by ascription and self-ascription? Because if you self-ascription, that means I call myself. For example, I ascribe to myself to be a Bangsamoro. So, kasi meron continuation sa agreement ko eh, ng self-ascription and ascription. So, yung ascription, other people call you Bangsamoro. Self-ascription means I call myself as Bangsamoro. So, will be included in the Bangsamoro identity. But that is not settled. So, the question, yung, yung debate, remains there uh, when it comes to the settlers, particularly in the whole terminology of ascription and self-ascription. The third controversy will be the spouses. Kasi ditong mga descendants no matter of degrees. Kasi alam nyo ho, eh, controversy, ah, oh, ikaw mestizo, ah, ikaw hindi full brother, ikaw meron ka lang 5%, ikaw in chiki, hindi ka naman uh, moro. Eh, ang, ang lolo mo lang, isang moro, napag-asawa ng ano, yung mga gano'n no, na how, eh, kaya ditong law at sinetel, no matter the degree, no, whether mix or full, kahit 1% ka lang, pwede ka na mag-ibang sa moro, basta na nahalahiang ka, <coughs> nahalahiang ka ng dugo ng mga native seal before, before the coming of the Spaniards. Nalahiyang ka ng IP, indigenous people, o nalahiyang ka ng mga 13 ethno-linguistic groups, eh magiging bangsamoro ka. Mix or full. Yun yung tatlong yun po ang, ang, ang konting merong debate on the understanding of the bangsamoro people because the law defines the bangsamoro identity. Lahat po naman kasama doon sa bangsamoro government. Dapat, ano? Eh, sa pag-assign po ng mga ministry, there should be no discrimination on the basis of ethnicity, religion, and gender. So, klaro ho yun. Eh, kahit po sabihin natin merong inarticulate expression ano, na dapat Bangsamoro lang yung nasa posisyon kasi yun ang question ho nila, oh, bakit yung minister dun eh, hindi man yung Bangsamoro, bakit naging minister? Ah, ibig sabihin, kala lang ang mga ministry ay maging bangsamoro according to the definition of identity. Those are the ambiguities in the law and some people interpret the law, yung provision of the law, according to their own way of interpreting the bangsamoro people. Meaning to say, only the bangsamoro people should occupy positions within the bangsamoro government. So in question, kaya hindi ka bangsamoro? Oh, eh, Ibig ano, eh, ang naging batayan pa, eh, very restricted religion. Oh, hindi naman siya Muslim, ano? Dapat Muslim lahat yung nasa official sa Bangsamoro. So, those are the ambiguities. Sabi ko, until we become very inclusive of all, hindi magiging sustainable ang ating experiment. So, that's why the basic question, the basic critique in the Bangsamoro identity will be whether that identity is exclusive or inclusive. And then you can use the word ascription and self-ascription to make that Bangsamoro identity 
inclusive of all inhabitants of the territory called the Bangsamoro region. So more or less, yung, yung, yun lang merong, merong mga konting debate ang aking, babasahin nyo naman po lahat eh, no? Purpose, eh, mababasahin nyo rin po yan, ano? Pero balikan ko lang yan, balikan ko lang po yun, ha? Please, okay. Eh, dito nakalagay din, to secure the identity and posterity. Then, meaningful self-governance, mga operative work, but within the framework of the Constitution, national sovereignty and territorial integrity. Yung three hong yun. Remember, the three magic elements in all negotiations, you see? Uh, framework of the Constitution, national sovereignty, and territorial integrity. So, nilagay na ho yun up front in the purpose of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Hindi po ito separatist movement, hindi ito dismemberment of the Republic of the Philippines, and then it follows the Constitution. So pag unconstitutional pinapas ng parliament, you can still go to the Supreme Court and to petition the constitutionality of such legislation by the parliament. Because it remains within the framework of the Constitution, the national sovereignty, and the territorial integrity. Kaya lang po, eh, ibabalance po yan sa allowing meaningful self-governance and identity. Yun ang ibabalance on the other on the other hand. Okay? So, how to maintain that balance uh, is very crucial for the leadership both in the national government as well as in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. The Balancing Act. So, ito, makikita niya na po yan, ano? Territory, power, resource, identity, as this as well. Eh, very important uh, to weigh the future of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. Uh, we weigh it in terms of geographical coverage, the territory. Medyo may objection dyan yung ating gobernador ng Sulu, Archipelago of Sulu. Sabi niya, territory, mahihilap na mga rin. Pinagsasama kami yung mga poor provinces. We will have no future. So, at saka hindi kami contiguous. So your territory will always be a question in terms of coverage. Uh, powers, eh, maganda yung powers eh, binigay. This can be an example, a model uh, for a future federal state because there for the first time you have 58, 58, napakarami ho, no? Dati, nine, 58 enumerated powers of the Bangsamoro Parliament. So 58, wow. So resources, Eh, napakaganda rin po because uh, sa power sharing eh, kinunsin ng national government eh, yung wealth sharing in terms of resources including mines including strategic resources so hindi lang po national government so nagkaroon ng concession ng national government maraming question to sa constitution but uh, the national government agrees na, na on mines including strategic resources ay magkaroon sila ng sharing. And then, eh, magiging din i-way din ang Bangsamoro Autonomous Region kung fine-tuning that identity. And then, what is very important siguro eh, that people should appreciate, eh, people in Luzon, sometimes they don't appreciate, is that eh, you appreciate for the first time the Philippine government uh, admits and accepts the legitimacy of the aspiration and the struggle of the Moro people. Napakaganda ho ito eh, kasi eh, hindi man to kasi rebelde man ang consider sa kanila before. Before eh, si secessionist, then rebelde, then of course eh, yung struggle. But uh, this time around with the new law as well based on the agreement eh, there is what we call the legitimacy of the aspiration of of the Bangsamoro people as well as the legitimacy of their struggle. Maganda ho yun eh, no? Kasi dati, yung struggle are criminalized, ano? They are crimes against the state. So when you recognize the legitimacy of the struggle, oh, that is completely different now. So yung mga, kaya nga meron nung sa normalization and mainstreaming, merong component ng itong complete uh, rehabilitation din ng kanilang area, pati ng kanilang mga kampo, and then yung mainstream ng mga combatant in terms because there is now a legitimacy, 
admit legitimacy of the aspiration as well as the struggle of the vast amount of people. So, yun ang bahalaga ho doon. Very important, ano? That's why, sabi nila po, paano ko yung mga veterans, ay may mga veterano, you know? Legitimate na ba? Do you recognize also that the combatants of the MNLF and the MILF who perished during the struggle are also veterans of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao? That's a big question. I was asked that question. Why did the department not discuss it? And then perhaps come up with a resolution. And then negotiate with the government whether they will be considered also as veterans fighting for the homeland. But that is a thickness issue. But that is a matter for debate for the Bangsamoro Parliament. Okay, so but that important, the important thing is the identity and the legitimacy are considered by our national government. Ito na yung territory po eh, nakuha na ho yan. Mababasa nyo na ho yan. The only perhaps important eh, yung Bangsamoro waters and this is in special appendix. Eh, nagkaroon ng malaking debate ho yan eh, no? So, yung mga settlers, yung mga mayors, like mayor of Sambuanga, or, and yung mga local government units, ang understanding nila, water separates. So, divided, kaya yung water divides. So, that means, eh, hanggang doon lang kayo sa dagat. Kabila ng dagat, iba na. This, this side of the dagat is ours. So, Sambuanga is not included in the Bangsamoro because there is the Bisulusi. Bisulu divides. Ang understanding po ng Bangsamoro is that water does not divide. The water connects. So, so magandang understanding, you know, different. Eh, the water connects this island to that island, you see? And then all the islands are connected by the water. So all the people, all the, all the towns and, and provinces within the Sulu Sea are connected by the Sulu Sea. All the prov towns and provinces uh, within the Iliana Bay, are connected by the Iliana Bay, the water. So, magandang understanding din ako, no? magkakaibang perspective. Water connects, water divides. So, but that will be for future consideration. Okay. Ito yung barangay. 62 na po. Ang na-concede. 62 barangay in North Cotabato. Okay. Uh, ito, 55. Ang bilang ko, 55. Mali pala ako, no? 58 ang enumerated powers. So the uh, powers lies in the Bangsamoro Parliament, uh, but that will be in the regular election, you know. And then there'll be an expansion of the authority of the Bangsamoro. The Sharia will be amended. Republic Act 1083. Magiging lesson din natin yung 1083. Uh, that will be part and parcel of this course. The what do you mean by expanding the Sharia law, personal law? Uh, that is uh, PD 1083 because the law says it will include commercial and criminal cases provided that these are punishable by press or minor. And parliaments shall legislate this amendment. So the amendment of PD 1083 will be given to the Bangsamoro Parliament. Now the question is that will that require a congressional amendment of PD 1083. Presidential decree PD 1083 is a national law. It is a PD. So when the parliament uh, legislates amendment to PD 1083, will that become national law or that will be a regional law that covers only the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao? So that is continues to be debated. Perhaps that can be part of your paper whether the whether the amendment to PD 1083 will be because this will be done by the parliament will require a congressional action that it becomes a congressional legislation approved by the president and then it becomes the new law instead of PD 1083 or the amendment of PD 1083 will remain within the confines of the Bangsamoro autonomous region. And now, of course, uh, as, a, as stated earlier, during the time of transition, that is from the time of the plebiscite to the time of regular election to the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, which by law is set in May 2022, we have the Bangsamoro Transitional Authority. And that is the period of transition from 2019 
to 2022. Three years. So now we are in 2021, mid-year. Mid-year of the transition. And uh, magpapahal ako ng candidacy in October. Ano? That means uh, ngayon, no, eh, April, magpapahal ulan ng residency because requires a one-year residency. So, kaya ho, eh, nag-move ng extension and no election. So, what will happen? There's no legislation yet. And uh, election is coming and there are requirements needed. The first is the residency and the residency should be established by April. If there are, for example, if you want to, to run, uh, you establish in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, you should be a resident of Bangsamoro Autonomous Region beginning April to have a one-year residency. And then uh, you will file your, your candidacy in October because the election will be May 2022. So marami yung mga, mga masilimut na usapin tungkol ho sa extension and election uh, because we are needing mga dates that are very important in the conduct of 2022 election. And the most important of all is that uh, wala pa hong Bangsamoro Electoral Code kasi one of the mandates of the BPA during the time of transition is to codify a Bangsamoro Bang Electoral Code. Yung mga five codes will have been in place pero hindi pa in place. Only the Administrative Code at Civil Service Code are in place. So the rest are still in the committee meeting. Yung pong uh, Electoral Code is still in the level of technical working group. Sabi sa akin ng TWG under the office of the chief minister, eh natapos na nila. So it is under study now by, I don't know, by the Central Committee of the MILF or by some leadership in the, in the leadership in the bank. And then after only when they have uh, said yes to that uh, draft by the technical working group, that it will be presented to the BTA for this debate and public hearing. So, electoral code, yung mga schedules of forthcoming election, eh, malapit na po, sabi na, tsaka yung recess ng Congress, sus, Mario Josef, ano, eh, mag-recess ang Congress ng Holy Week. So, after that, eh, mag-resume sila, eh, mapag-uusapan pa ba yan, eh, mga congressman after Holy Week, eh, busy na huyang campaigning, ano, So, pag-resume ng Congress. So, mm, mm, eh, mm, very short na yung timetable natin. Kaya nga, sabi nila, kailangan ng presidente mag-intervene. First and foremost, is that to certify yung proposed legislation as uh, uh, talagang priority bill, na, no? certified bill by the president. In the absence of that certification and prioritized bill, baka hindi matake ng, ng kongreso. At kung nakita naman ng congressman na senador natin na the president behind this proposal, alam naman ho natin sa kongreso, they can do that in one day as they have done before. No? Eh, depending sa kumpas ng Malacanang. Eh, you never underestimate, sabi ko, the power of the Grand Dato along the Pasig River. So the Grand Dato of the Pasig River is all powerful. So the Congress will listen. So because they can pass that law in no time if the president is behind it. So the, as far up to, uh, no, today, the president has not acted on that. So that means the president simply told them, I understand your predicament. I sympathize with your aspiration, but you work it out with Congress. As far as I know, the speaker, when he was asked whether the president has uh, any particular preference on this legislation, and the president and speaker said, the president said, time na lang daw bahala na ang kongreso ang bahala. Mahirap po pag kongreso ang bahala, that means it will be what you call, you will pass through the long way, not the short, not the shortcut, you see. So, pag the long way, we don't know how much debates will be put into that and whether it will be passed into real legislation. 
So knowledge is like naman po, eh, magkakaroon pa naman other debate. The debate is whether that 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 amendment to Republic Act Republic Act 11054 will need a plebiscit or not. Kasi you are amending Republic Act 11054. Kasi yung abas kida uh, jurisprudence uh, is just simply setting the election that the law does not set. Kasi 6734 and 9054 did not set any time for election. So, hindi ho nag uh, abas kida, in the Supreme Court said, it does not amend Republic Act 9054. But this time around, eh, kasi yung Republic Act 11054, nakalagay yung petsa ho ng eleksyon, May 2022. So, meron akong debate ho dyan. Kasi kung, kung walang referendum of plebiscite on that amendment, that means Congress can easily amend organic law that has been ratified in a plebiscite by the people. So it will become like ordinary legislation that Congress can do and undo and exercising its plenipotentiary. However, organic law is something different. It's a bit higher because it's a law that, that gain the vote of confidence of the majority of the electorate in the given area, like the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region. But that is remains the debate. However, uh, my point only is that read Republic Act 11054, read 905, uh, Republic Act 9054, and see yung mga salient points that you think important na difference. And then uh, you don't have to write a paper, just a bullet point, okay? So, ito yung nakonsid ho ng ating gobyerno kasi Ito kinukwestiyon pa rin ng Phil Kwanza in the Supreme Court as you know very well kasi yung mines and minerals have been considered by national government joint for strategic mineral fossil fuel and uranium eh, itong mines and minerals sa constitution being questioned by the Phil Kwanza in the Supreme Court. Black grant of 5% total national revenue collection cost of collection development rehabilitation of fund 50 billion for 10 years or 5 billion each year and given the fiscal autonomy that is the parliament. So this time around, compared to the third uh, version or the third, the third uh, experiment, uh, this time around, the fourth experiment, the government grants the war with all. Ito ho, parang sa Achi, sa Achi ho, 2% lang eh, nung kanilang oil, ano? Ito, 5%. It goes beyond. Talagang very generous sa Philippine government in sa paggan ng black ground. This will amount to 70 to 100 billion a year. So, so eh, ako, di ko na alam bilangin ho yung billion na yan, ano? Uh, 70 to 100 billion depending on the national revenue collection and cost of collection. And over and above that, this is the part and parcel, yung redevelopment rehabilitation fund for the camps, yung mga military camps of the MILF. Kasama ba yung MNRF from? Eh, kasama na rin siguro. 50 billion for the 10 years and then 5 billion for each year. Hindi po kasama dito yung another grant for mainstreaming and decommissioning which is another appendix in the agreement. Kaya parallel ho yung see, magulo ho ngayon eh, yung BTA sinasali sa extension yung mainstreaming tsaka yung decommissioning. Totally different doon, meron yung covered rin ng normalization which is an appendix to, repa, to uh, peace agreement of 2014. Iba na rin yung fund na meron sila ho doon. Eh, so far, ang na-disperse doon ay eh, over 1.5 billion doon sa kasi ho eh, di binigyan ng bawat isang na kumbatan na, na mainstream of 100 million na cash. Hindi eh, rin ako nagpinanggapin eh, eh, pero yung allocation, ano? Then, 500 million po na housing at saka half a million din ang other pong mga benefits that they will receive every combatant. So, isang million ang ina-allocate for every combatant. Since there are about 14,000, 40,000 kayong declared yung MILF eh. So, 40,000 yung main mainstream. So, there will be 40,000 million or 4 billion altogether for the next 10 years. Iba ho yun, separate yun dito, no? So, and there will be guide fiscal autonomy. Eh, yung reality on the ground is something different. Oh, eh, alam nyo man, ako'y nakikinig sa ground. Well, pwede hindi man 100 
thousand ang natanggap ko is only about twenty thousand, iba fifty thousand. Saan ang punta ka kayo? Iba, eh, hindi nila alam. Ano? So, but anyway, that will be besides the point. But it's good that the combatants will know that they're entitled to these particular privileges and benefits, part and parcel of the peace agreement. In short, the government I think, is not lacking in giving the black fund in development and rehabilitation, including the normalization. At on time naman po daw releases, tinanong ko kung on time by releases, Minsan papel lang ho, hindi eh, na re-release. Si talaga ho, na release daw. So that means eh, no more reason for not improving yung Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. No more reason not to mainstream and normalize the combatants. No more reason not to develop the areas not in coverage of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region because the wherewithal is there. So that is very important, and there's the fiscal autonomy. So one year and a half into the bar, uh, do we assess the performance or not before considering extension or not, so that we will know what is being extended, or it will be more of the same? That is a big question mark. We should not uh, simply say yes or no without looking at the realities on the ground. But that will be our lesson next time, OK? so. Ito ho, hindi na kailangan, babasahin niyo yan. I'll go to it. So, indigenous people, they are recognized in the law. They are well protected in the law. Ito ginagamit nyo ng mga indigenous people because uh, the law, uh, Republic Act 11054, fully recognize the United Nations Declaration on the Indigenous People. It fully recognizes also the Indigenous People's Rights Act. And it recognizes in the law also tribal justice and laws, but needs to be legislated in the parliament. The right of representation in the law that represented the non, you know, reserved seat uh, to non Moro IP, the two representatives uh, reserved seat, but they can always contest the constituency seat, your know, single constituency, and they can also contest your know, party, political parties. Uh, not fifty percent, and then of course the, their freedom is recognized to choose their identity, whether they are IP, they are Tirurai, or they are Bangsamoro, or they are all of the above. Sabi na dun lang kami sa all above. Now we are Bangsamoro, we are IP, and we are Tirurai. Di ba three? Maganda ho. Maganda sa gochon. We are all of the above. So, but the IPs uh, in law, uh, they are fully recognized. Napakaganda ho yung kanyang recognition rights, their privileges, and then what they have won already in battles, they are fully recognized. But the question is that the recognition in the letter does not necessarily recognition in fact. Kaya yun ang question sa akin ng mga IP. Eh, pwede, hindi man nagkakatutod. Nakasulat lang yan. Ano? But that because, that's the time for you to really monitor the implementation of law. Because uh, the law is not set implementing so no law is set implementing. You have to force your governors to implement them. And you can do that, of course, by election and choosing the right representatives. But that is important. So the indigenous people's rights are fully recognized. And uh, not only their representation, but their rights are, are contained in Republic Act 11054. So among the settlers, the itong question, eh, how long shall we stay? in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Territory to be qualified as a citizen. Sabi ko, may naman provision that there's no discrimination. There is a religious, there's no discrimination on the basis of gender, jays, or color, identity, or religion. Religious freedom is fully recognized. Vested rights are recognized and respected. And they have rights of representation. Dalawa po, sa reserve seat. Two in the reserve seat in the parliament are reserved for the settlers. But of course, the settlers can also contest the single constituency as well as they can contest also the part, political party's representation. Because 50% of the parliament will be coming for political parties, 40% will be coming for single constituency, and 10% will be in reserve seat. And then all rights guaranteed by the Constitution are recognized and expected in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region of BARM. Okay? 
So, ewan namin yung 10%. Baka sa susunod na lang huyang pag-intensya. So, I'll, I will conclude there, ha? Okay? Uh, we will close this. Okay. Okay, do you have any question now? Uh, Father, good morning. Yes. Uh, Father, uh, with respect to the paper, Father, uh, can we focus on certain areas between the, the difference between uh, 1954 and 1105? Say, for example, we focus on representation or political structure or <laughs> on, on the aspect of the territory or the powers that have been granted. Okay, that's a good suggestion para limited lang. Okay. Yes, Father. Close the section and compare, okay? Ah, okay, Father. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Father. Okay, good. Pero huwag na magkailan, mag-choose na the same section, ano? <laughs> okay. Well, okay, oh, sige. Can you, when you have chosen the section, can you post that in our piece blackboard so that other people will not repeat the same section, okay? Will that be okay? Hello? Yes, Father. So once you've chosen the section that you make a study on Parison, please post that in our peace blackboard so that the rest will not follow suit, okay? So that they'll take other sections. Okay. Good? Thank you, Father. Okay. Anything else? Are you all included in the peace blackboard? Are you all there or no? All of you. I'm not sure if I'm already there, Father. Uh, we have our Viber and group chat yata, pero sa peace uh, blackboard. Hindi mo natatanggap yung reading materials because the reading materials are posted in the blackboard. Me too, Father. Ah. Huh? Wala, wala pa ako natatanggap, Father. That means you are not, just Martin, you are not part of the blackboard. So I will do that. Okay. Thank you, Father. Okay. Thank you. You send me an email so that I'll include you, huh? Yes, Father. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. All reading materials are posted in the blackboard. So make sure you are part of that blackboard, okay? Uh, I think we will conclude our lecture, okay? Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Thank you very much. So, ang, Thank you, Father. Ang ating kong next class will be... be I think next session will be April 24. Is that right? April 24. Kasi mago Holy Week, eh, no? April 24. Okay? April 24. Put that in your calendar. Our next schedule will be the 24th of April. I'll send you again the, the webinar ID and password. Okay? So thank, thank you, Father. Thank you very much. Thank you. Salamat, salamat. Salamat. Thank you, thank you Father. You. Salamat. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Salamat po. Salamat. Salamat. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Salamat, Father. Mami, salamat. You're number one, okay? <laughs> you will be number one in class. <laughs> thank you, Father. Okay. Uh, God bless. Okay. God bless, Father. Thank you. Bye. Bye.